Turn to the left. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, what the uh, fuck is that? Okay. Hey. He's cool. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. Anyway, <laughs> high five one more time. I missed. It's dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is very dark. Uh, stairway to hell. Ugh. That's tempting. Can I go? I hit myself in the head with the, <laughs> with the microphone. You alright? Pokemon. I like Pokemon. Well, I used to love the Pokemon games, but I haven't played them in for hell and ever. Uh, I mean, we've talked about this in the past. I think the last Pokemon game I truly played all the way through was uh, the original Silver and Gold. Same. Yeah, second gen Pokemon is like where my Pokemon expertise ended and I moved on to other things. So and, like I said, when it got to the Game Boy Advance, I was all about Castlevania and Metroid. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really grab third-gen Pokemon and didn't stay into it after that point. That's how it goes. And it got to the point where when I tried to play the new ones, I was just like, I don't know what types any of these are, so I don't know how to exploit type advantages. That's and fair. there are just too many of them. And the gotta catch them all thing that made it so addictive as a kid is just... Absurd not as appealing now, anymore. You know? Well, again, also, it's not as appealing anymore mm -hmm. because, again, the older you get, the more you realize, like, I'm not, I'm never going to be, like, the first to catch them all. And it's not really that much of an achievement overall. Not to mention, I don't really care that much about three different kinds of soup pigeons. Like, you know, it's like, well, again, it's like I got the Campbell's like, chicken pigeon back in the day, and I uh, don't really care to catch the, you know, the Campbell's linguine pigeon. And the, yeah. I don't know. Weird example, but you know. Well, they, they keep making things that are so similar to like other things. Like, well, I'll tell you one uh, chicken that uh, that one bird that uh, Jaden is at least very happy that uh, she caught teriyaki, who just so happens to be right here, <laughs> right by her side, the her her OG. From her original Nuzlocke run. Teriyaki. Yeah, teriyaki. And... I always just think of the voice in my head now from uh, Duolingo saying teriyaki. Teriyaki. When I was trying to learn Japanese. You uh, brush up on that Duolingo. Oh, gosh. I actually haven't touched it in a long time. Fair. Fair. I'm, there's certain things I, I, have, I really wish I would have kept up with. I remember how to say good morning. Ohio. Ohio gozaimasu. I know, um, <clears throat> sumimasen is like, excuse me. And I know that sayonara is goodbye. Mm -hmm. I know that, uh, konnichiwa is hello. Uh, uh, it's like, yamani uh, gonbin, sute. Uh, gonbin, uh, uh, is good evening, I think, I think that's how you say it. Ohio, watashi wo Nathan Hamilton, uh, watashi wo yamani sute. Which is uh, what I understand. Uh, that's uh, I. Hello, my name is Nathan. I'm from the mountains, which I am. I'm from the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. But I think it would be Nathan, like. Nisanu. Because they don't have like a long A sound as far as. Ne Nisanu. That's probably what it would be in terms of if I conjified it. I can't remember if there's a th sound in Japanese or not. I. I think I think it's substituted with like a s, like be. with an s. Nesa nu. Uh, and I honestly I, I would love to know what my conjified. You don't really have be. to do the nu because they do have a n sound, so you can end it. Nesa with just n. n. Yeah. Nesa n. Yeah. I I don't know what what that translates to in Japanese, but. In Hebrew, Nathan or Nathaniel means the gift from God. So you're welcome, Internet. <laughs> so my name is just kind of funnier in Japanese because instead of like Nick, it's like Nick. 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 Oh, imagine if they were like Nika, Nika, Nika. Nikun. Nikurasu. Nikun. Nikun. Nik sama. <laughs> Nika Sensei. Yeah, if I was teaching somebody something. Yes, yes. Like, hello, I will teach you how to edit videos. And all of a sudden you have a Japanese student. Nick Sensei. Arigato. 
Uh, but anyway, we have here Jaden Animations, the darkest Pokemon game you've never played. That's saying something. She is correct. I've never played it. I can guarantee Me neither. You, because it's probably not going to be silver or red. Or yellow. Or blue. Or gold. Or, yeah, again. Technically, I played silver and red, and I never really had the others. So. Well, I played yellow uh, 100% through. Played blue with my friend Andrew, because we, we shared, uh, we shared uh, the card. Uh, well, my to... friend uh, Andrew had blue and I had red, so we just traded Pokemon back and forth. Yeah, uh, eventually we did that <clears> too. Help each other get the ones that were exclusive, you know. Ah, uh, God. Anyway, so let me go ahead and uh, get into this. Let's check out. It's what funny you... that we both had a friend named Andrew that we played Pokemon with too. Yeah, it's a different Andrew than the one that came to hang out with us. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say the Andrew that I'm uh, that I'm talking about. We, I haven't seen him in God over a decade. But anyway, here we go. I've played a lot of Pokemon in my days, and by that, I mean I've played the same Pokemon game with various different skins. But I'm here today to yes. showcase one of, if not the most unique ideas for a Pokemon game Nintendo has published for our tiny little hearts. And that game is called Pokemon XD Game oh, of Darkness. Oh, okay. XD. A bit unfortunate, Whoa. but it came out in 2005, <laughs> so they get a pass. Why am I talking about it? I think it's an underground game not enough people know about. It does something different, kind of shakes... In all honesty, that game on GameCube right now is worth big bucks. I knew about it, but I never played it. I did too. I think Chad actually has a copy of it. I'm not sure. Except the formula, it's constantly overshadowed by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. And... Yeah, okay, I played it as a kid. I'm very biased. Is that what you wanted? If you've not heard of it or played it, you're... Jiggly tough. ...in for a treat today. The game opens up to a cargo boat, the SS Libra, out at sea, where we find the captain and guy who steers standing at the helm. All is Helmsman. calm and serene when suddenly they get swatted. And it's not no ordinary SWAT today, folks. No, sir. This is a Lugia SWAT. They run out to see what's going on, and the captain looks up and makes this face as if he wants to kiss Lugia passionately on the lips. But Lugia's not here for kisses. He's here for the opposite of kisses, which is crime. He hyperbeams <laughs> the cargo ship and then steals it. You heard me right. Just blasts the thing point blank and takes it away. Lugia's ship now. The presumably only two people on the entire boat fall Lugia into be the like, water Look at me. and are left I to am the captain drown now. in the ocean, I guess. Yeah, basically. Well, that was a bit raw. What? Yeah. No shit. Damn, Lugia. You gangsta. What are we, a minute in and two people are dead? Gen 10 could never. Hard cut to me because that's more important. You play as this boy kid named Michael, but actually his name is Jaden now because that's me. The game throws you into the <laughs> middle of this intense looking fight between the Salamence and Metagross, both level 50. I don't know where I am, what the stakes are, who I am, but this battle seems really important and tough, so I'm gonna give it my all and immediately Oko it. I did it! Screen goes black. I open my eyes, everything's blurry. Wait, 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 then he immediately negs me by telling me it's about time I go out and get myself more Pokemon besides my one lame Eevee. Backhanded <laughs> compliment at a child, but I'll take it, I think. I go into Crane's office where him and my mom are talking, and he says he heard from the battle coach that my battling skills have improved dramatically, and how proud he is of me. To which my own mom tells him to stop giving me compliments and praise because I'm gonna end up spoiled rotten. I don't know what kind of a response that is to a child receiving praise. Either I'm already a cocky little bastard or I'm being currently emotionally neglected by everyone in this building. Whatever it is, I don't think it's healthy for my mental development. To make this mother look even worse, we realize her only other child, Jovi, is missing and no one is looking for her. The world is only filled with overpowered wild rabbit animals and crazy people. No, I'm sure it's fine you haven't started looking for her. Keep doing what you're doing. I get a lead saying she really likes hanging out with family friend mad scientist Dr. Kaminko, so I head over to his house and I'm about to knock on his creepy door when this tiny little blind man, Chobin, the doctor's assistant, walks up and is like, BURGLAR! and challenges me to a battle, to which I win because he only has a level oh. 5 sunkern. Jovi comes out <laughs> and is like, Oh, hi, big brother. It's Jovi. Did you get lost, big brother? Silly big brother. Jovi will guide you back home. 
All right, I see why no one was looking for it now. We yeah. return home to the lab and they present me with a snag machine. Go. A machine that allows the user to catch shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that have been so abused that they turn evil. Now, they're saying they haven't seen or heard of any shadow Pokemon that exist anymore because they've all been purified years ago. But who knows when they could start popping up again? Better be safe than sorry. Bam, okay. some guys from a secret organization called Cypher bust into the lab, beat everyone up, steal Professor Crane, show off their shadow Pokemon and run off to their secret base to never be seen again. Well, I'll be. The lab is in shambles, <laughs> not knowing what. Uh, I'm gonna say, man, just come in there, gangbusters, just being like, we're gonna steal this guy. Like, okay. Uh, any knowledge? Why? Okay, they're getting in there and they're gone. Huh. Did they just have shadow Pokemon? Wow, this thing's really gonna come in handy. Ah, I see what they did there. What to do? But then that decides what they're we gonna call complete their pure lazy writing. Yes. Purification <laughs> chamber in his I don't even have, an, I don't even have back, anything to add to that. Do it's something it, it about it. Is. They sent me off to this seaside town, Gadion Port, to retrieve a machine part they need. And Joby pesters our mom to come with because Joby doesn't think I can handle going out on my own. And Joby needs to hold my hand and guide her big brother the whole way. Okay, not only does this little snot talk in the third person for no reason, maybe our mom didn't care enough to get us any education. Perhaps she was worried the teacher would give us a compliment, heaven forbid. But she's also the most annoying character I've ever witnessed in any media. And I've watched an episode of My Hero Academia with a great kid in it. <laughs> hey, Mineta. Okay, I'll say this about Mineta. He's annoying, but he gets but he gets his comeuppance. A lot. From Froppy, from uh, ear, uh, Earphone Jack. Dude, he gets his ass kicked a lot. Also, uh, I, I raised those... Uh, stakes, and I would say that uh, Navi from Ocarina of Time is quite a bit more annoying than that. Because, hey, hey, listen, listen, hey, yeah. hey, listen. Like, like, shut up. Also, like, I, I don't like Mineta's like lechery and stuff you know yeah he's a lech don't get me wrong but there are also characters that just are obnoxious because of their voices in anime a lot too yeah I stand it. i really couldn't stand naruto with the english dub originally it was believe like, it it's uh. like an acquired taste like i had to get to the point where i could just kind of look M past it before i could and, finally enjoy look, the show maylee flanagan i think that there aren't very many people who can do the voice convincingly in English, and Maylee Flanagan does a good job as Naruto, but God! Oh, the writing needs the writing needs a definite punch-up in terms of just, like, not repeating the same thing over and over again, and also, you know, giving Naruto better stuff to say overall. <laughs> anyway, sorry. We go to Gadion Port, and not two seconds pass until Joby pisses off this random guy, Zook, who happens to be the buffest man in the world. He's about to punt her, and I'm about to do nothing about it, yes. when this old man and his color-coded henchmen step in and obliterate his shadow Zangoose. Old man, I was about to be free of everything that is bad in my life. And you took that away from me. We get the part <laughs> yes. back, and Mom tells me about this spot in Agate Village called the Relic Stone where you can naturally purify Pokemon. I don't know why you're making your own purifying chamber then when there's a rock that already does that. I go to Agate, and this very enthusiastic man with a Pikachu shows me the stone, Hello. and I'm like, cool. To which he's like, by the way, my friend Vander might know where Cypher took Crane. Oh, okay. okay. I go talk to Vander and he points to this random spot in the desert on my map and is like, Oh, they're right here. I saw them. What were you doing out there? That's literally just sand. <laughs> wow, would you look at that? A headquarters. Huh. I start infiltrating the base, mm, battling all God. the grunts that fall from the ceiling. So either lazy writing or that guy is part of the bad guys team. That's, uh, yeah. I wonder what, I wonder if that will come back in the, I don't know. I haven't played this game. I find. Until I reach Pink Hatsune Miku, who's trying to get information out of Crane about purifying shadow Pokemon. I battle her and win, which means I get to unkidnap him. And while heading out, I find this data ROM on the ground. Huh, this seems very important and like it has a lot of secret information about Cypher on it. 
Convenient. Brain returns to the lab and everyone's happy. Yay. And then they send me to Pyrite Town to find Ned, a guy that should be able to crack the ROM and access all the information on it. So I head there and he's like, yeah, we can crack this. Smile. While he's hacking it, I go out and play around in a random cave and run into Mirror B. This guy doesn't do much in this game, honestly, but I just want to make sure you know he exists and listen to his music. I go check on Ned again, and Cypher's bust and beat everyone up and kidnapped another person. Uh. Have you guys min-maxed how to kidnap people or something? You're two for two at this point, and are scarily efficient at it. They tried a hostage situation the data ROM back, and even though I beat up this big man and take all his shadow Pokemon, Ned still wusses out and gives the ROM back. Yeah. He thought he was being two steps ahead because he saved all the information on his server already, but Cypher just logs on and deletes everything anyway. Net says the only thing he remembers from the ROM was that Cypher was behind the disappearance of the SS Libra, and they're about to attack this city nearby called Fennec, and someone needs to go warn them. Be I guess you, I'm protagonist, just Mr. Man. Scooter across the desert and save everyone today. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's like, this, this mission literally said, give to Protag. Here you go. God dang it! I don't want to do this anymore! I also I like how there's panic. always, like, you know, adults in these games when there's, like, these situations oh, yeah. going on. That someone are, like, gets kidnapped. Very send bad, the child. and they're like, send the kid. Yeah, someone gets kidnapped. Someone gets a bunch of shit stolen. Oh, cyber This town crime. is literally about to be attacked by terrorists. Yes, like, send, send the child! Send the kid, yeah. To warn the mayor about the attack and as soon as i arrive this lady hits me with a confetti cannon congratulates me on being the millionth visitor to the city and shoes me away to celebrate at real gam tower i try to get around her because this is important but she's determined to gatekeep me no matter what i do so i just go there and realize she literally sent a child to illegally gamble his life away wow no one in this region likes children, do they? Nope. After not being able to figure out how to play bingo, I head back, sneak into the mayor's house, distract his house sitter with music, and find out the mayor was trying to write a note to Justy, the city's gym leader, warning him about the cipher attack. I don't know why the mayor was trying to ask this random gym guy to help, but he was kidnapped halfway through writing it, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> cipher realizes I now know what's up, and everyone in town reveals themselves to be disguised cipher grunts. Oh my god, they kidnapped the entire town. I love the fact the butterfly, too. Yeah. Butterfly's just like, don't mind me. I'm just wanting to pollinate the flowers. Never mind, you're going to die. <laughs> I don't care what kind of organization you're from. If you can successfully kidnap a village, you've earned my respect. I beat up Cypher, rescue their shadow Pokemon, and free literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement. Justy says he saw something suspicious going on in the desert and points to another random sand spot on my map I should go investigate. <clears throat> Honestly, how are all these people just stumbling onto these shenanigans in the middle of the desert? And why oh, are wow, they able to there. get the latitude longitude of these locations after finding them? This has got to be like tens of miles out from any sort of civilization. This is where people run out of gas in their car and then shrivel up and die before anyone can find them. <laughs> why were you here? Wow. Yep. That's the cargo ship. How did you find this? All right, what is so <laughs> enthralling about this desert that crime and vigilante justice is constantly going on in every square inch of this place? Cypher's running around on the ship, and after I take their shadow Pokemon and chase them out, this group of strangers calling themselves Team Snagum walks up and roofies me. I wake up, realize they stole my snag machine. This random old man who just started living in the wrecked boat said he saw them head off in that direction and points to the middle of nowhere on my map again. <laughs> it's like, hey, old man, do you work for them? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay, I work for them, but I, 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 I like, I like, I just like adventure, you know. I, I like being useful. I hate, I hate working for them. I. I literally clean up their shit. I literally clean up their shit from their ba from their bathrooms. They wouldn't even give me a place to live, so I'm having to live on this boat. Exactly. They told me to look after you whenever you woke up, uh, but you know what? 
I don't like them anymore. Go take, you know, here, go to this random place on the map. You people are beyond me. I show up and wow, another headquarters for crime. I make my way to their head honcho, Gonzap, who's trying to put on my snag machine, but he's too big and muscular and adult. And since I am a child, it does not fit on his giant muscle arm. He pretty much gives up, asks if I want to join Team Snagum. I say yes, but he fights me anyway. And after I beat him, he's like, actually, you can have your arm thing back. We're not enemies. Awesome. So why am I here? You drugged me, stole my stuff, and then just called friendship and gave it back. I find Cypher's shadow Pokemon factory <laughs> and walk up to the actual biggest men I've ever seen in the world. Damn. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta, oh, I gotta do something. Pokemon factory and walk up to the- Hello, I am Goz and I am Mez and we are here to pump you up. <laughs> Actual biggest man I've ever seen in the world. How oh, look, at she's a girly man. It's like, actually, I am a girl. Really? Ah, I see. Ah, that is interesting. So, do you want to work out? Work on your traps? Maybe your calves? I can see you've got some little noodle arms. How naive I was to think Zook was big. Foolish me. Anyway, they're about to beat me TF up when Gonzap shows up, expresses his devotion to our newly blossoming friendship, and rubies them for me. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're Thanks. really consistent at that. I go inside and climb to the Rufies. roof where their power generator is. There's a tiny little piece of paper there that says, Use system lever to adjust voltage. Do not raise voltage too high. Crank! A guy comes out and starts yelling at me with his Pokemon when the tiny old man who accidentally ruined my life in Gadionport comes on screen and is like, I'm evil and creating a Pokemon that's unpurifiable. Come get me. This is my IP address. I need to cross the ocean. <laughs> what the fuck? That's unpurifiable. Come get me. This is my IP. So that explains why he saved the annoying ass little sister. He's evil. Yes. So now I think we can officially put the dots together. Also 42069. Yes. Your sister is also evil. Also, uh, <laughs> you know, old man, you wouldn't have this problem of your IP address being out there if you were using ExpressVPN. P uh, address. Not I need to cross. Huh? Not sponsored, but we could be. Your move. It's the ocean to get to him because he's basically on evil Hawaii. So I take this Robo Kyogre from Kaminko, speedboat my way there, and you guessed it, fight everyone in the building slash volcano until I get to the big little man. After fighting an entire country's worth of people, I find him, his name is Grievel by the way, and he's like, I'm surprised you made it this far. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm busy, don't bother me. And blocks me with a giant pane of glass. Honestly, out of all the fictional villains I've seen, this is surprisingly decently reasonable. But I'm not gonna just sit here and stare at him behind the glass like a goldfish at PetSmart. So I just walk around and use the side door <laughs> which really sets him off ah! <laughs> I mean, it's like oh the other door how did you know either lock the door or don't have it this is just what doors do gravel's like you blew up our shadow pokemon factory you got past my glass that's it. I'm summoning Shadow Lugia, the first Pokemon to ever be unpurifiable. Come forth and obliterate this small boy. To which I just master ball it. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dude, that is the best strat. It's like, final boss? Oh, wait. This Pokemon isn't actually, hasn't actually been captured yet. Master ball. Yep. Overlooked that one, didn't you, mate? He may not be purifiable, but he's mine now. <laughs> Huge L. Reeble gets so beyond pissed that he decides to open his creepy eyes and fight me himself. And I was surprised to realize not only does he have a team of all shadow Pokemon, but he somehow nabbed Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. What the fuck? I'll be honest, it was a really, really hard fight because shadow Pokemon are super effective against all non-shadow Pokemon. I don't know how it took me this long to tell you that, but that's how it works. So instead mm. of trying to catch them all like I've been doing this whole time, I really just beat them up and they ran away. So I win! Cypher has officially lost everything, and it's all because of me, the little boy. Blue Henchman runs up to Grievel and is like, Sir, I have a plan. Let's blow up the island with the kid on it. Which is like, oh my god. And then Red Henchman is like, 
Okay, that's a bit too far, man. Dad, let's go home. Yeah, they pulled the I'm your father slash son twist on us, but it has very little effect on me because I do not care about these people. Anyway, they decide to not blow up the island with me on it and stop being evil, I think. Maybe. I'm like 60% sure. And then happy ending, I just go home. So what do you think? <laughs> For some reason, I really liked the game as a kid. I never actually beat it because I didn't know how to get past the gatekeeping woman in Fennec. Glad I figured it out this time. I also wanted to mention how lively the animations are in this game. Sure, some of the Pokemon look god-awful. They gave Houndor human knees that bent forward, but they're all just so expressive and show so much care and personality. It may be pretty sad the current games don't show this much passion, but I guess that's just what makes these games more cherishable. Anyway, I, yeah, the game was fun I can and see weird. That. I like it. See ya. <laughs> if I still hey, played uh, Pokemon at that point, I probably would have enjoyed it too. Yeah. Yeah, I... I didn't care as much about story when I was around GameCube era of age, mm. I guess. Well, by GameCube era, I was into, uh... Yeah, I was into, like, more action platformers and stuff like that. You know, because uh, PlayStation 2 had the Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter series. Uh, also, there were a bunch of, like, again... Also, Beautiful Joe. Uh, I'm looking up at my collection that I have up there of uh, the various uh, uh, Nintendo games. Yeah. Also, on my GameCube, Smash I played Bros. Through. dominated a lot of my attention during during GameCube. With my GameCube, I played through Super Mario Sunshine, uh, Beautiful Joe 1 and 2. Nice. Um, Twin Snakes, Metal Gear Solid. Very nice. Um, Eternal Darkness. Yes. And... <laughs> Luigi's Mansion. Uh, yeah, I did play through Luigi's Mansion one mm -hmm. time, and uh, Metroid Prime. Nice. And that was about it. The Metroid Prime series is the next one that I'm probably going to start aiming at getting on uh, my GameCube collection, because uh, I know that they have the the trilogy on uh, you know all together on uh, what is it Wii. Wii U? Yeah, it's Wii. Or okay, Wii. But I got to be honest, I I would just really like to like have. Just to be OGs. honest, the Wii is actually the definitive way to play them, though. Well, because the pointer. I get that. The, the Wii, motion the controls Wii make the first two games much better. Fair enough. But, ah, uh, well. Either way, I'm... <laughs> so I guess go ahead and let's finish this up. While Anyway, this game also is, like, all double battles, and I thought that was really interesting. I'd like that to happen again in a new game. Um, nothing else really to say can't believe the queen's dead. Oh! Damn. Damn. Well, right. I mean, it was bound to happen, my dude. I mean, look, I, let's be honest. She was 96. That's, she's probably the long, one of the longest serving monarchs ever. If not the longest serving. Uh, hmm. Betty White made it longer, though. Well, Betty White almost made it to 100. I'm still sad that Betty didn't make it to 100. Mm -hmm. I'm still sad about that. But... Hold on. Let's see. Betty was the queen of America, so America won. <laughs> so, oh, so King Louis. Well, again, that one technically just shy by two years. But less than two years. Although, here's the thing about Louis. He was coronated when he was, I think, just three years old so that's a bit that's a bit mu uh, fucky when was he coronated okay coronation oh no I was wrong not three he was 11 oh okay he, so I was about to say, a three-year-old king it's like what does the king decree oh no wait the king decrees he wants more animal crackers hold on Wait, he technically wasn't coronated, but yet his reign was from six... Okay, he was officially made king of France when he was five, but he wasn't coronated until, like... Hold on, that that's kind of... No, that's bullshit. You have to be coronated in order for you to officially be king. I don't know how all that works. Coronation, well, again, it wasn't like uh, Elizabeth was... Queen uh, was queen the very moment after her father died. She had to be coronated in order to become... 
She was the she was basically like queen in name only, but you have to be coronated in order to officially be king or queen. I mean that's why there's uh, there's a dispute over certain monarchs because they even though they were king or queen because of the death of somebody because they were never officially coronated their their uh, their uh, reign is disputed. That's that's kind of BS because if that's the case, Louis uh, Louis the Fourteenth would have only been king for around six around uh yeah sixty one years instead of seventy two years. So that's kind no that's I don't count that. Queen Elizabeth is the longest serving monarch ever. From her official coronation, yeah, from her official coronation. Until her untime, un, well, I shouldn't say untimely, but until her passing, where's the one? Uh, it's a uh, so, uh, Sawaze Land. I forget the is King Sabuza from Sawaze Land. I think he's one of the. Uh, oh yeah, there he is, longest reigning. <laughs> okay, so here was his whole thing. He was coronated just after he was born, so literally. 82 years and 254 days. And also another thing about Sobuza, he had 210 children. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Plus over 70 wives. Yes. Yeah. Damn. I, I know, right? It's like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, gosh, I love history. Anyway, that was a uh, yeah, that was Jaden Animations' uh, darkest Pokemon game uh, that you've never heard of. Uh, if you all liked what you saw from Jaden Animation, feel free to click her name in the title of the video. And if you want to see more from us, feel free to leave a like. Feel free to subscribe. And until next time, signing off. I'm Nate. I am Nick. We'll see you later, everybody. Peace.